special guest? Guys, we are back with another baseball video with our special guest, uh, baseball JV superstar, uh, <laughs> Lane Harry, <laughs> folks. Unathletic but enthusiastic. Uh, yes, he was really the gel that got the team fired up. I like the way you say that. He was, he was a great first baseman. Lead by example, that's what I want. There we go. Did you play for him? He was a great first baseman. <laughs> great first baseman in our eyes. You know, I played outfield, so it didn't. Yeah, it means I didn't do anything. You bandana like that, you better be an outfield. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I got this bandana, and Sam won't let me wear it when I'm home. Pretty much. I mean, she will, but she hates it. And so when she's not there, I wear it all the time. As you should. I think it's good, bro. <laughs> so. <laughs> you wear that alone? <laughs> oh, yeah, all the time. I'll be at home just downstairs playing Xbox. Like. Got my bandana on, playing some Minecraft, here we go! Yeah, we made the joke earlier that he looks like Cody Bellinger when he wears this. Two prison so Mike. Cool. Yeah. Cody Bellinger's glasses. Yep. I'll take it. Just warm Cody Bellinger. I'd go okay with it. Yeah. We'll leave it there. <laughs> well guys, uh, here's what we're going to do with this video. We've tackled the worst uniforms and the best uniforms. Well now we've got three hardcore Mariners fans here, and we are going to be breaking down some of our favorite Mariners moments favorite Mariners memories, and getting hyped for the upcoming baseball season, uh, which is sure to be full of surprises for the Mariners. Yeah, pretty good nicely. So uh, where do you guys want to start with this? You just want to go kind of down the line, maybe just get a general discussion going of um, just our favorite memories, being fans of the Mariners? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. not kicking this one off. All right, I'll, I can start off. i got to dig deep here before I can get into something. Right, I've got to dig myself out of a hole that it seems that my wife created uh, for me. <laughs> That's true. Hi, I'm Spencer. This is Spencer. <laughs> Spencer, what is your favorite Mariner moment? This is an easy question. Oh, my like favorite it. Mariner's moment All right. happened on a September night. I believe it was the 9th of 2014. <laughs> great, <laughs> night. Great, great, great night. Great, great night. Great night. Yeah. We were playing the Astros. Okay. No one in the crowd. Nothing happened in the game. Of course. I think it's zero to zero, something like that. Part for the course. Lomo's up to bat. Just absolutely slaps a home run. No one's in the crowd. I love a good slapper. We're in the crowd. We get the ball. You are no one. We scratch. <laughs> <laughs> we get into, you know, a little fight over it. With someone else or like? Someone else. Okay. Me and Spencer a little bit, but mostly someone else. Okay. Some say I caught the ball, some say I got the ball. Spencer says I got the ball, I say I caught the ball, but I, the ball was in my hand. Okay. It wasn't in his hand. Yeah. I've it's never seen ball. him catch a ball. Was so. this another young adult or was it a kid? It was an old lady. Okay. Yeah. And I beat I'll her to sure it because I got quick legs. <laughs> souvenirs. No, if it was a child, I would have let him have it. Well, yeah. debatable. No, she's a good yeah. You're a child. Yeah. I would have let I would have let the kid have the ball. But uh, it was Spencer, between me and like a 38-year-old woman, approximately. 
maybe 40s. Just another bitch. Another bitch. <laughs> so I got the ball and uh, says my name here. I'm a home run club member. The you don't actually nine. say your name because we called you and introduced you as Spencer earlier. So you know, if you want the well, fame. You're right. Um, I'm Spencer. And uh, this is my bitch's ball. <laughs> So I'll, I'll break down the real story of the home run ball, okay? The low, low ball. So my, uh, you know, because my wife will spare on the details because she doesn't, she didn't care about baseball when we went to the game. Yeah. Which is the most frustrating part. <laughs> <laughs> so we go to the game. Uh, this is a Thursday night game, actually. Thursday night. So there's hardly anybody there. And it's Mariners Astros. Now this is the same Astros team that would go on to win World Series, but they were just really young. And it's really bad that year. And so what you're getting is a Mariners team that would end up missing the playoffs by one or two games, uh, playing a, a team teams. that we should sweep. And they absolutely fucked us over that night. <laughs> Brutally, <laughs> brutal defeat. Like the Mariners should be dominating these guys. Uh, we kind of had a ragtag team, uh, but we were doing really well that season. And so uh, anyways, the Astros are kicking our ass. Logan Morrison comes up to bat, which Lomo was one of my favorite players when he was on the Mariners, only because uh, we got to see him hit multiple walk-offs, yes. which he probably only had one or two with the Mariners, uh, and we were there for for them. We've been there for a lot of walk-off wins. Yeah, we have. Wins. That <laughs> yeah. dude had more unlucky hits where he'd slam the ball and yeah. get right at somebody. I mean, right. exit velocity wasn't a thing a couple years ago, but oh, yeah. Yeah, he was at the top of the charts of like... Here's 110 off the bat, and <laughs> it's right at the first base. Right. Yep. I'll never forget, you uh, retweeted something uh, where Logan Morrison was asked about what it's like playing with like limited or no fans during COVID. And he was like, well, uh, I've played for the Marlins and the Rays, so it shouldn't be any different than, <laughs> than that. And I appreciate that he didn't say the Mariners. Yeah. Because while he was here, our team was kind of hot. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, uh, Morrison is my mother's side that's like their family name. So, of course, as soon as we got a Morrison, I bought a Logan Morrison jersey, yeah. which made it like the rarest jersey to find at the ballpark. Yeah. Um, it was only got up in value. Yeah. And so then the fact that I would be at the stadium, Logan Morrison, of all players, would hit a bomb directly to me in a Logan Morrison jersey was one of the greatest baseball moments I've ever witnessed. Yeah. I mean... If he would have seen the jersey on my back, he probably would have thought to himself, this is the greatest moment of my career. Yeah, this would have signed it. Right. Yeah. For sure. So here's what happens. Uh, my wife thinks she caught the home run ball. No. Here's what happens. The ball absolutely breaks my hand. Uh, it absolutely crushes all my fingers. <laughs> it lands in the seats behind us. My wife is on the corner alley. I slap the ball to her. She picks it up, does this. Everybody crowds her. They give her the ball. They sign her goddamn name on the ball. And she <laughs> caught the home run ball. I'm over here holding my hand the rest of the night. Uh, but it was just a, it was a good moment. Uh, I always have this saying that I say that my wife loves to make fun of me for. But I always say that it's really, that baseball is so different than other sports. Yeah. Baseball, there's a different vibe when you go into a ballpark, and there's something just almost childlike about it in this awe of pro sports. Yeah. And it just feels like a home when you go into a ballpark. And I always tell my wife that, you know, a little moment like that can make a baseball fan for life. Yeah. Like, like, if you catch a foul ball and you give it to a kid, you could turn that kid into the next Mike Trout, you know, and there's not a lot of sports that can accomplish yeah. that. Um, and anyways, luckily there was nobody around that night. <laughs> so we didn't, I didn't have that ethical dilemma because I have always been of the mindset that, um, you know, there'll always be other balls to catch at games. Yeah. And if you catch one and there's a little boy or a little girl in front of you, you give them the ball. And you yeah. tell them to say they caught it and tell their friends they caught it. And yeah. They're really cool. And they're right. Story for it. Exactly. I've done that a couple of times in Tacoma. Yeah. Because we've gone to a lot of games and there's 20 people in the crowd. Right. You're guaranteed to catch something. Yeah. 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 It's fun like that. That's yeah. one of my favorite memories of the last couple of years, going with my cousins coming up from Portland. Obviously, we don't have anything to watch down there. Yeah. My cousin's kids were seven or nine, and so it was their first baseball game. 
They were playing the Angels. I think it was right about the time Pujols got a 3,000 hit. I, we were there, I was we there, were we were there that game. night. Yeah. So it was either the day before or the day of. It was the day before. I know it was. Because they went to like 13 innings or something yeah. crazy. And they were, everyone was like sick and tired. I'm like, this is awesome. We're going back and forth. Having a great time. Getting to like teach the kids about baseball a little bit because they don't get to watch it very often. Right. Yeah, those kind of memories like that are just the shit that comes to I, I yeah. think that's I the, the thing about it. Well, and like both of you are alluding to is just... Baseball has just this magic to it that you don't get with other sports. Like you had said, you know, there's just something about going to a baseball game, the atmosphere. I mean, the minute I walk into Safeco, it doesn't matter. Or, we're just called Safeco. Yep. And, uh, but, you know, I mean, we've sat next to fantastic fans of the Mariners, fantastic fans who, of the other team. I will still never forget the Blue Jay fans who offered us yeah. beer. They were great. And then, but like I sat next to just an old woman who was in her 90s, just still sitting there with the thing, filling out the innings. Yeah. I I, love that. And it's just so cool because you can go to this baseball game. We've been to games and seen the Mariners just get destroyed the moment the first pitch comes out. (laughs) But you can go there and have still just a fantastic time. You know, sometimes it's not about whether or not the outcome is in your favor. It's just... You can go with your buddies and have a fantastic time. One of my favorite, like, funniest things is it was girls' night out, and we went with five guys, and yep. and Jasmine, I think, yeah, and so she was it the was, only girl. It was my wife's birthday, yeah, and we went to girls', girls night, night out, out, and it was my wife and all of, well, not all of, but a lot of my guy friends. Yeah, and it, it was just like those things where it can just be so random and funny and. Still a great time, and I think that night ended on a Lomo walk-off. A Lomo walk-off against the A's. Yeah. yeah. Were you there? Uh, no. I'm sorry I didn't invite you to that. Yeah, personally. personally. <laughs> and I just took all my friends, like literally all my friends, like I would not have forgotten anyone. It was... More important than like my wedding was friends, like. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the reason I thought you might have been there is because... It was, uh, we met Steve Scott and yes, Ryan Steve Winchell. Ended up, and Ryan came over. Like, by chance. Us. We yeah. didn't know they were going to be there. We're in the same section. It's really a shock that wasn't. That would have been 2014, right? At this was, if it was, this was then. maybe 2015. Well, we weren't really friends until, like, 16, 17, whatever. We yeah, we've only known each other for two years. Wait, no, we graduated in 17. Stop, stop Wait, guys. we have been friends for longer than that. Well, we were, like, acquaintances. We didn't hang out in high school. Before. We were teammates. In fucking fifth grade. <laughs> well, it meant something to me, Lane. You are still in my phone as Longhorns. No shit. Yeah, Lane Airy, Longhorns. That's shocking. Well, that's, that's all you are to me. You're a teammate, buddy, and you're <laughs> here and you're selling me out. It's like, special guest, we gave uh, you a special chair. Sorry for being blatantly honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, well, can I redeem myself? Yeah, you can redeem memory? yourself. Because yeah. One of my absolute favorite baseball moments was not even at a game. It was sitting in the library with you and Luke and Sam. Yeah. And it was like 9.45. Yeah. And we're drowning on with the project. And no one gives a damn about it. And I'm trying probably to make you guys focus on something. And you're going off <laughs> on a game show idea. Because Spencer is the best presenter yeah. of any school project ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm making you guys listen to the Mariners on the radio. And it's Leonis Martin yeah. in the bottom of the ninth. It's a fucking walk-off game winner home run. Yeah. And we just got so hyped up right. in the library, in the library. <laughs> on a random Tuesday night yeah. against the A's. I mean, it's nothing special at all, but right. it was just getting to do with your friends, and get, it got so exciting. And you go back and watch the video, it's really radio. Yeah. It's a fucking main shot of the ball. Yeah. Yeah. And just, I mean, one of my favorite memories wasn't even that game. It's just on the radio. Yeah. Right. With your buddies, dragging on with something else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have another, I have a handful of good ones of being at games. Yeah. Uh, as a kid, you know, obviously huge Mariners fan, but I also just loved the Yankees. Yeah. They had this, like, magical team where it was, like, Jeter and A-Rod and, uh, you know, they might have even had, like, Teixeira, but they also had, like, this might have been earlier, where they had, like, Giambi and Hideki Matsui and Bernie Williams, like, that team. Early 2000s. Yeah. And Jason Giambi hit this home run that I'll never forget, like, I always mention this in my Yankees talks, but absolutely destroyed the baseball, <laughs> and it crashes off the glass on the Hit It Here Cafe at, at Safeco Field, and I just remember being so excited, <laughs> <laughs> and everybody around me like, what? 
Why? Yeah. But, yeah, what a, what a home run. <laughs> I've tried to look up that video a million times and I've never been able to find it. Well, wow. that's, everyone's got a couple of home runs that just will forever stay in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. I have a Mark Teixeira one where he's like with the Angels. Maybe even Texas. I don't remember. I was yeah. with my dad. That's why I remember. And I remember my dad going, holy shit, I've never seen a ball travel that fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're in your 40s. Seen a lot of fucking baseball, so and yeah, this has been a really good home run. I'm 12, I don't know any different, right? Yeah, but just oh, there's little moments like that that stick with you that you don't get those with football as much or with basketball, right? Yeah, or really any other sport that's kind of the beauty of baseball. Yeah, well, and one of my favorites a couple years ago, I went to a minor game and Ichiro was up, and I think he was when he was on the Marlins, so I think it might have been that yeah. year. And he came up, and every time he got to bat. The entire stadium just stood up and cheered him on. I, I love that about Mariner fans is, I mean, we obviously really love some players, even if they are kind of just mediocre, but like, we really love our players. And I, I it was just one of those cool moments where you're never going to see anyone give a standing ovation to another Chiefs player, ever. But yeah. every time Ichiro came up to bat, it was just like, I love you, man. Like, it was awesome. Yeah. I really love that. And like you said, you, you, you're not going to get that in other sports. Are you going to do that when Felix comes back with the Orioles in two or three weeks? I don't think this he will make the I guess we should go now. They're really bad. Oh, also, yeah, they we, are really bad. That's true. We probably won't be able to go to the games at that point either, so I think it's a moot point. But yeah. it is kind of weird that he'll be back in another jersey like two weeks into the season. I, I selfishly don't could. want him to play. Uh, I don't want him to start for another team. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that is, but I feel like it, you know. Like, you would do it yourself or something. Yeah. That's fair. I don't, I, I understand his desire to play, and I, as a competitive person, I love that about him. He's yeah. always been super competitive. Yep. But he's been our guy for his whole career. Yes. And I want him to stay our guy. Yeah. Like, if he's going to go to an absolute bottom of the barrel team and suck, just suck here. We're going to suck too. <laughs> No one remembers that Joe you. Montana played for the Chiefs. Yeah. 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 He'll get a couple years down the road and be like, oh, yeah, by the way, Felix did play for another team. I just really want us to retire Felix's number. They will. Yeah. And I just, they, but we would, unless Felix makes it on the Hall of Fame ballot, we couldn't if he played for another team. Well, they'd have to change our, our rules, which they will. They're just, they're all made up rules. And yeah. It's set in stone. That's true. Very want. When we didn't, when we, yeah, when we didn't have anybody going to the Hall of Fame, it was easy to make strict rules. <laughs> so now yeah. we're like, oh, we got a couple, so we yeah. can loop them in here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we got to go to his last game, and it was like it was one of the weekday nights, and we can take time out of our day to go to a baseball game on a weekday night. That shit's good. Yeah, but I met up with a few of our friends, and one of my friends got tickets and got in line. He was like literally the second person in line. He was there hours before games opened, open. And we got to sit there and watch Felix warm up in the pen, front and center, right there. Yeah. And then we're pretty close to the field and watch his last game and just getting that last change up to strike out. Right. Robbie yeah. Grossman, I think it was. Yeah. And Dylan Moore having to dive and play to like save the game. And just getting that last little inkling of baseball out of Felix in that last yeah. moment. And yeah. Then he comes out. We end up leaving like with him from the out left in the ninth. Comes up, came right down to our section. And yeah, was like hugging the fans and everything. Were you guys? Uh, uh, no, but I I, I made a point to you. like record it, and I couldn't go. Yeah. I, so I recorded it and I watched it like the next day. There was must have been Sam that showed up because we had four tickets. Yeah. And then Sam didn't really care for baseball as much, but he's still there. Yeah. He's still at this pivotal moment in someone's marriage. So he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, yeah, whatever. I just don't want to sit at home. <laughs> right. You know? No, I but forget what I had was, going on. I might have been playing music. You probably were. Yeah. But it was just such an emotional time and just a, a crowning moment to cap off Felix's career. Yep. The one good player you had for 15 years. Oh, he's, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's our guy. We, we didn't grow up watching Griffey playing the games. Right. I mean, yeah. We watched him, but we didn't. He wasn't our guy, he was poor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yep. So he was our Griffey for the lack of a better term. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. He was like the, yeah, he, like post Ichiro especially. Yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. the guy here. Uh, and I mean, that like 20, 2014, 2015, that like, that kind of last stretch of like, you know, Cy Young competitive Felix where he had like that in, incomprehensible so amount of good. quality starts like in a row. Those yeah. those years were really fun and we were lucky we were going to like 
a lot of games. Yeah, we went to like those 15 years. or 16. Yeah. Because they were like yeah. 10 bucks a piece. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When we bought the Manor fan package and we'd go all the time. I remember I'd just be driving home from work and I'd be like, what? Hey, do you want me to go to Manor again? Yeah. And we were just, yeah, sure. I mean, oh, man. those are some really good times. We're just getting to go on Happy Felix Day and all that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It, as a Mariner fan, it's nice when you turn on like MLB Network or ESPN and they mention Felix. You know, he's yeah. the only player that they would. Yeah. And it's like, oh yes, people in New York might notice us. That's <laughs> because they all wanted it. Yeah. yeah. And they're yeah. sending you trade ideas that are like, here's our bag of garbage and bucket of baseballs. And right. You, know, you get back Felix and go fuck yourself. Yeah. Right. You're not bad. Yeah, throw in a deep dish pizza, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else? Uh, not a uh, Mariner moment, but I do love our little superstition of walking oh, down yeah. the staircases okay. at every game. Yeah. Uh, one game we went to, I can't remember who we played, but we were walking down because we were parked in the parking garage way up the top. We're just walking down, and you and I are just lost in conversation, and we go down all the way down to like the basement of the parking garage, and it just is like, Nothing. It literally yeah. has stairs that lead to absolutely nothing. It's just like a wall and some pipes. And we're like, oh, we went to the wrong floor. Right. So we came back out, went to the game, and we ended up winning. And we were like, that must be it. That's the secret that sauce. Is, yeah, that is our superstition. And so every time we go to a game now, we'll always walk down, get to the bottom, and go, oh, no, we went too far. <laughs> <laughs> and then walk yeah. back up. It works, Lane. It works. Works literally, literally every time. It's only weird if it doesn't work. Exactly. Yeah, literally every time. You're gonna get arrested one year for like conspiracy to plus. <laughs> I know. Trespassing underneath the oh, no. parking garage. Oh, no. the <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, I have a really good one. Uh, you mentioned the Blue Jays game. Yeah. And so this was in 2014. This was a good Mariners team against a really good Blue Jays team. And I forget who they had. They had like their like young hotshot pitcher at the time, and it was Felix. So this is like going to be this epic matchup, and we're sitting right in like Blue Jay territory. All the Vancouver, British Columbia Blue oh, Jays fans come down. Blue Jay games. blue, as far yeah. as the eye can see, and I've never seen Safeco Field so packed. <laughs> and it was just <laughs> the wrong color of blue. It's like hardest Mariners ticket to ever get. Would have been yes! that Oh God! So they we sell them so much that we can. Yeah. Just well, we had the fan app package, so they were like thirty bucks. Yep. They were great, and we were sitting like. On the third base line, it was fantastic. Yeah, seats. really good seats. So the Mar it was actually a really good battle game. Yeah. And there's a moment where you know the Blue Jays fans are super nice. They're offering us beer. They're like super cool. Cano cracks a home run deep to left field, and it barely squeaks over the wall. Barely fair. Like you didn't know if it was going to be a home run. And like as it happened. Lightning struck. Yeah. Oh, I've seen that picture. Yeah. Yeah. That's and, such a great picture. And it such happened a, like right cool in front of picture. us. And yeah. then they like closed the roof, and then the Mariners took off after that. We dominated the rest of the game. Felix had like a super ultra quality start. And we had Fernando Rodney coming in and closing out the game yeah. that night as well. It, yeah. It was just one of the great moments. The it was Fernando super Rodney cool. experience. Yeah. Man. We've been to a few of those light shows. <laughs> yeah. <we have. laughs> I remember yeah. going to a Blue Jays game and sitting next to Brett Laurie's aunt. And Brett Laurie was the brother of uh, Huskies legend softball pitcher Danielle Laurie, who she was like an Olympian, yeah. old mayor, I mean like all time great pitcher. Yeah. And her brother played on the fucking Blue Jays and he was supposed to be like the shit and ended up playing out and just not doing that great. But I remember sitting next to it, she was happy to introduce herself as that's my nephew. Yeah. yeah, and all that, and be like, oh, that's cool. And then she was just a bitch. <laughs> she was so hard to listen to. It was like, I don't want to sit next anywhere near you. You're, you're me. Yeah. Yeah. You're just straight up me. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just being like, oh, that's super cool. And then just took a total dive of the conversation. And she was so just annoying and mean to sit next to you. So yeah. No reason not to be here. Yep. There yep. you go. Solid reason. Yeah. I have a memory as a small kid. This was maybe like 2004. Um, like peak loving baseball. Like yeah. that was maybe like nine and uh, nine or 10. And the Giants are in town and JJ Putz strikes out uh, Barry Bonds for like maybe the second out wow. in the ninth inning. Yeah. And I just remember it was like super, you know, the Mariners are terrible. But it, this was like we had, the, we had the win if we could close it out. And yeah. here comes Barry Bonds. <laughs> and like JJ Putz just absolutely puts him away. Like 
Swinging strike three. No pun intended. But yeah. Foot, foot in the hood. <laughs> uh, but we had like super good the, like season tickets that my mom got from someone that was selling them. And yeah. So we were like 10 rows up from home plate. And just like being able to see pro baseball players that close for yeah. the first time and seeing like Barry Bonds. Yeah. It was like unreal. Baseball legends who are going to live in baseball history for a long time. Right. Getting to see them. So getting to see him strike out as a kid uh, was pretty cool. Yeah. Like, we got him. I have almost the same memory of going to a game that Felix started against the Giants. Yeah. And being conflicted of like, well, I want to see Felix actually shove it against Barry Bonds. But also, I loved Barry Bonds at the time. Yeah. And wanted to see him hit a dinger. Sure as shit. He hits a home <laughs> run, and it's just a screamer into a right field. Yeah. And then Felix comes back and like struck him out at least once, maybe twice, I don't remember. Is but this like... So that was the same around the same time. It so five, so six, six, seven, seven. Yeah, yeah right at the end there. I think it was about the end. Yes, <clears throat> but yeah, it's probably the same fucking series. Uh, but again, holding on to those special moments, like I gotta see one of the seven hundred and fifty six, fifty eight, yeah. whatever it is, yeah. and also get to see my favorite guy win the battle. Right. At the same time, like that is like a dream. Yeah. Dream it was scenario. Dream it, it's like it's exactly like when Fulhos got that three thousand hit against the Mariners. Like everybody there was wanting him to get that hit. I was so mad. I was getting a pretzel. I have. A, I watched it on the. I, I oh, watched it right. on the TV, and everyone was just going nuts. And I'm over there and all of my pretzel, like sad. Like I just missed baseball history for this pretzel. Oh, so let's talk about baseball history. I was at one of the very last games of Griffey when he came back, 2010. And yeah. We had like we were in a suite for whatever reason. I couldn't tell you how we got that. Yeah. But. Never ever leave a game, but I had to pee so bad this particular day. Yeah, and I go to the bathroom up in that the sweet concourse. Yep, and I'm walking back, and I hear the fucking crowd erupt. And Griffey hit it was like his second to last home run. Uh, yeah, uh, like 629. I, I see it on the TV. <laughs> I'm like, you have to be absolutely kidding me. I had to take a piss so bad I missed one of Griffey's last home runs. Yeah, yep. and sure enough, he retires like two weeks later. Yeah, something. but I. That, that's one of my favorite moments, too, is witnessing Griffey's comeback, and uh, this was in 2010 also, and we were in also in those season ticket seats that my mom had a guy that she worked with that, like, Hooked it up. bought the tickets for 30 years and didn't go to many games anymore, yeah. and uh, seeing Griffey hit a home run, because like you said, we were a little bit too young to grow up to see him the in his prime here in Seattle, so to be able to see the comeback and witness the whole show that was yeah. King Griffey Jr. Yeah. It was, was really cool. Good. It just wasn't quite as uh, violent. Right. It was dude's badass. Yeah. It was really cool to, <laughs> to say that I saw that. That's a nice feather in the cap. And I totally missed it. So that's a feather <laughs> I'll never get. Yep. Uh, enjoy that. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, you know, so... When did you see, uh... When did you see Paul Merrill hit his last home run? I'm just kidding. I was like, um, Lafayette. Yeah. That dude was playing in like an independent league not two years ago at like 55, 56. Really? Yeah. And I think he was really good player. Hell yeah. I In my Rangers phase, I really liked Rafael Palmero. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Rangers. Uh, one thing that I like about Mayor Games, uh, too, and this isn't even like Mariner related, but one, I do love their the different fan appreciation nights where they always do something really cool. But one of the coolest things that I saw was Mike McCready of Will Jam come out and play the uh, um, national anthem. And I just thought that was really cool. It was just this beautiful Sunday, just an afternoon game, and we're on the third baseline. And yeah, dude, and I was just like in the shade, so it was nice and cool, but then, you know, it's just glowing, sunlit on the back, and there's just Mike McCready just fucking shredding over there. And that was really cool. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. There's just so many things that Seattle's such a cool spot that you can incorporate it yeah. into Mariner games. It, like, even, I love the Hydro Boat races. I will be green until I die. <laughs> I mean, I'll get a green Hydro Boat tattoo. I will go for that boat until <laughs> I, I am you want to get it. dead. So let's get on the back of my cap. So no one has to ask about it. Yeah, I, I mean, I will root for that green boat every single time. Die hard about it. I remember like just other fans who, you know, they'll be yellow, red, I'm like, green! Yeah, and you know, just yelling at them like, no, it's gonna be green. There's I, been I, a lot of boring games where that's the that's most exciting moment of the night. Yes, I, and I don't know, I, that's the thing I love about Mary Games is, yeah, you can be a, a die hard fan and really appreciate when baseball history is made there. But you can also be a casual fan of the Mariner game, and something there is still going to be super exciting about. I think they have to when you're winning on the field. You yeah. got to keep people in there somehow. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, sure made diamonds, and I think the all-encompassing experience of going to Marin State is pretty awesome. They have a really yeah. good package, yeah. And yeah. like you said, the promotions are really good. They yep. do really good fireworks nights. We've had some cool bobbleheads. We've had that hat. We've gotten yeah. some other cool our demo yeah, hats. My beard. Oh yeah, I mean, turn the heads across night. Star that's Wars. Yeah. Oh, that's another one. Star Wars night when we went there. Oh yeah. Before I get into this one, I do want to mention my dad, and you know, luckily he doesn't watch these, so he doesn't know that I was sharing the story, but. He went with a bunch of buddies, and they just got fucking plastered before they got in. <laughs> and they're dressed up as Han Solo and Chewbacca, and my dad was Han Solo, and his buddy was Chewbacca. And his buddy was wasted and just trying to kept making Chewbacca noises, and the crowd around him got so pissed that they got kicked out of the mirror. <laughs> oh and I just, God. I think it's so funny that my dad... Wait, the same him. game that we were at? We're the same game we were at, oh. and I was, because I came home, and to get into our story, we got on the big screen three times that night. We did. And I go, Dad, why does God, we got on the big screen three times that night? And he's like, I got kicked out. <laughs> you know? But uh, you realize your dad's a lot more fun. <laughs> I know. Well, especially because, so Spencer and I, we got in with lightsabers. We brought lightsabers. And, and so the camera was like down a little bit, looking at a little kid. And I could see us up there. And I was like, dude, let's just stand up and start sword fighting. Like, they're going <laughs> to pan up. Yeah. yeah. And so we pull out our cheap little $5 lightsabers. And we're in the back just like looking. And we finally get on camera. But we didn't know what to do after that. So it's just yeah. us just going. <laughs> we're on camera. I know. We're on the big screen. And it happened like three, they like kept, two more times they that night. They kept coming back to us. Yeah. yeah and I have never been on the big screen before. So that was super cool. I I love that, that was game. a Han Seago yeah. bobblehead. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and I, we have the bobbleheads. Yeah, we, we have um, and Taiwan Skywalker. That was the year the before. One right? that we have, right? Bobble yeah, we went to Bo. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have a couple of those for some reason. Which one? The Skywalker. Yeah. I got a couple of those. You guys should play that out the next time they do that a little farther and like bring a fake hand. Watch it go fly. <laughs> 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 oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah, no, I That's like a really good idea. <laughs> yeah, we should. Oh, man. Well, yeah, there's just something special about baseball, right? Yeah. It's, it's different. Football and basketball games are events, and a baseball game is just a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Like go with, you can talk with your friends and catch up and do all that. I'd rather see friends I haven't seen in two years and go to a baseball game with them and BS over getting yeah. a beer at a restaurant or yep. something like that. You know, yeah. You gotta pay 12 bucks more for your beer. Right. But it's worth it. So yeah, fun time. I do. I want to bring up. Uh, I think it was literally the last game I went to, and we're down. What are we, what's the downstairs bar section called? The pen. The pen is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, so we're over there. We're getting like the margaritas or whatever that they have at the bar. We were like that's like the Edgar's. Uh, yes, Edgar's yeah. Cantina, and so we're over there just having a couple drinks and watching pitchers warm up. And there's this old lady who comes up and she's admiring like them throwing it too and and she's like wow look oh, at that dirt yeah. because they like come out like and kind of re-dirt it and i uh, know that's not a word but you know and so yeah, spencer just goes on this tangent to where he's like yeah they ship this dirt it's specially made out in like kansas and like see how far you can take he the went on like yeah. a five minute story of just how this dirt is so special yeah and like the agricultural properties that like it won't allow like the weeds to <laughs> grow in like yes and, and so like he's giving to and she's just eating it up eating it up and she's like that is amazing like thank you and then kind of leaves and i look at spencer and i go is that true no it's all horseshit yeah here it's like how did you how did you like <laughs> find that out yeah, and I'm like, it was... i just made it up <laughs> you just like going <laughs> yeah, it was the most like I, I believed it. It was like, I don't know. It was know. like a huge, like, life learning moment of this lady's life. And right. she's all changed for the different. <laughs> she's going to go and tell her friends when she gets back, guess where they get the dirt from? Yeah. And yeah. It's I, a fun fact to tell at dinner parties now. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I That was such a funny moment. Yeah. That was, I forgot about that. Oh, I will never forget it. I you ever had the crickets? So funny. Yes. No. I have had the crickets. You ever had a cricket? I don't want to eat a lot of chili. Lunch. You're asking like the pickiest eater. Oh, that's true. So live a little. Watch it on the Oh, yeah. Let's get the craft beer. Let's get, a, okay. let's get the like juicy IPA or whatever they got. All right. Yeah. Give me a couple crickets. Give me a, well, you know, give me a beer first. Get the crickets. I'll get the crickets and you can try one. Okay. We were at a game and it was just four of us and it was our friend Taylor. And we we're, you know, kind of picking at him like, yeah, you know, you eat it kind of quick and you don't want to think about your bugs. 
and she just fucking takes the thing and shoots like half the cup. And it was the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Oh, uh-huh. that's wild. That she just fucking owned it. And wow. I mean, I'm hats off. Yeah. So you know she's like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you gotta give it up. Yeah. yeah. The biggest props. I mean, yeah. the balls it takes to do something like that. Just the legs fucking out cool. of her too. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, well, you guys got anything else? Just ready for baseball. Ready for yeah. baseball. Yeah. Ready for it. Yeah. 2020 was incomplete because we had 60 fucking games. It's pretty dope. Life's been missing some. Yeah, it has. It's these real events. Yeah. It has. So what, what are we doing now? What's baseball doing now? Are we doing a shortened season again? No, it's full go. Okay. I know, spring training's in full effect right now. Yeah. Honestly, the Mariners have had some fun plays. Our back-to-back-to-back home runs that just happened. Right, and triple play. Yeah, and the triple play. Those so this things. is our year is what you're saying. Yeah. You know, we you always need. say it. One good spring training game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all you need, and you know. Replicate yeah, that. Uh-huh. We're about to go to the World times. Series in our pale blues. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> How much money would you pay to go to a playoff game? Fuck, dude. Good question. Uh, everything. And it ended on that. How much money will you pay? And the Mariners are playing game five of the division series. Not even championship series, the division series. I mean, I game, if, even if those we tickets have... are going to be thousands of dollars, it's going to break Seattle and Mariner fans because they're all going to be like, Baseball this hasn't. Stars. Yeah, we're going to be like, well, this has been 20 years. I mean, you have to be there. Yeah. Dude, especially like, can you imagine if we hosted like a wild card game here? Mm-hmm. It would be nuts. It would be wild. Like an all or nothing game. When. $20,000. That, <laughs> that 2014 season when they were right there at the end. Yeah. I remember going and it was like a couple of days before they got eliminated. Yeah. And it was a packed house and it was louder than shit. Yeah. And it was fun and it was wild. Yeah. And it was like going to a Seahawks game, but with half the amount of people. I know. Yeah. And I can't imagine actually being in the to get to a real playoff game. I know. It's going to be like that tenfold. Yeah. I would, so it would depend on the game. If we hosted like a wild card game, I don't know. I'd probably pay like. God, it's so hard to know if we're not there. Yeah. When we're there, I'm probably more willing to pay more. Yeah. So now that I got these big fancy credit cards, I'm willing to go a little higher because it's not. I'm gonna get my Amazon credit points back. You it's know, not real money I'm charging. Well, it's, all... it's it's tough because if it, you know if you spend all your money to go to say the wild card game and we win. And we make it deeper, and now you have no money to go see the World Series. You know, like you got you got a budget in case we go in case we go the distance. Because my gut says I'd probably pay like a couple thousand dollars for like a once in a lifetime for us experience. (laughs) (laughs) But like I I don't know if I don't know that I'd feel comfortable spending like two grand if we win. And I want him to win. And then be broke. But now we're in a divisional series, and, you know. I, yeah. Well, and the thing is, is the divisional series could be cheaper because, because there's more games. Yeah. yeah. We get at least two games. Maybe. Yeah. Well, depending on how we do it. It's yeah. funny. So we have no idea how any of this works because we've never been around the playoff team. Yeah. I, mean, I think, honestly, it might be a better investment just to buy fucking season tickets. A lot of hypotheticals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's just live in the now. Yeah. I, okay, I, I would probably pay a couple thousand dollars. A couple thousand? I was thinking like eight thousand. If it's like ALCS, like deep in it, I'd pay like a couple thousand dollars. That's fair. But I see, I, mean, I can only afford that like maybe once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you gotta I never took game. the hypothetical past the wild card game, so I didn't want to think too big. Yeah. yeah. I would probably pay like 600 bucks for a ticket. To sit in the fucking bleachers on a wild card game? Anywhere. Yeah. Just stand in the pit. Just to be there. Holy shit, can you imagine? Right. Just be going going wild. Wild game? <laughs> <laughs> I can like see the excitement on your face. <laughs> I mean, the atmosphere would be it. You could cut it with a fucking be knife. Electric. Meanwhile, people in New York are like, call me when they get to the fucking World Series. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that was anything close to an accurate accent there. Well, we can retake Bustle. you doing it and I'll splice it. Alright, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, yeah, yeah God, I, I would probably spend over, if like if we went to the World Series, like, God damn it! Probably like eight, Jazz eight saved grand. goodbye to our first kid. Yeah, fuck! I'd sell the house. Which is legit more than a fucking Super Bowl ticket that you're throwing numbers at here for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about that. Yeah, but I mean, it's 
it's, it, I don't know how it works. You know, playoff that's tickets the, in a seven game the whole conversation. a seven game series We're so far out might be cheaper than a wild card game. It's probably like two hundred bucks for fucking bleacher ticket to the playoff game. See, that's the upper limit of what I want. Well, yeah, realistically. Yeah. But how much would you pay if you had to to get a World Series ticket for the fucking Mariners at Safeco Field? Oh, you're gonna put an ad Safeco too? Like, well, what were you traveling? I don't. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay. Let's put this scenario. Well, okay, wild card game at Fenway Park. Would you try to go? Probably ten thousand bucks. Well, I have to put in the cost of getting a half. Mariner half Yankee jerseys for way more. <laughs> so the rest of them, <laughs> the side's like pinstripe. And then the Irish Mafia fucking Kill cuts you in half yeah. and buries you out. Underneath the so we're going all in. Yeah. I'm going to die. It's going to be at Fenway oh. Park. It's going to be in, in a Yankee jersey. Boston, <laughs> yep. Keep me far from the first person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. To answer your question, it'd be a fuck ton. Yeah. I would spend everything on it. That's badass. I mean, fuck it. It'd be a dream come true, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It shouldn't have to be a dream come true. It should just be <laughs> See, that's the problem. Your is, professional sport team, you should always have a case to do it. That's the problem is what if what if I spend a bunch of money on it and then we just make the playoffs every year for a handful of years? <laughs> <laughs> but that first game, that first playoff game we'll back, I think special. I would spend a lot on. Yeah. I would spend a lot. Even if I couldn't go to any more games and we won the World Series, to be able to go to that first playoff game... And you know what? I, I actually have a, some beef here because I want it to be a legitimate earned playoff spot. I'm so tired of the fucking shit that MLB's fucking around with right now where they're like increasing. They're it. done with the second or the extra playoff teams this year. Good. And then next year will be a whole another month. God, I just, I think they do it fine right now. Yeah. It's tough to, it's tough as nails to get in. It's a 162 game season. You know who the fucking best teams are. You put yeah. them against each other and win or take off. No it's doubt. Set up a baseball going all fucked up right now. And I can do a whole other video on that. Fucking straight out of how bad the setup is in baseball. But <coughs> it's going to be a mess in the next year. So I just enjoy the Mariners this year because they might not be in 2022. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not a teaser. I mean, that's a legit thing. I They're going to have a strike next year. I just fuck. And cut. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just, um, I really, really want us to make the playoffs in like. The typical seeding yeah. structure yeah. that has made so, it so we tough. know that we are. I don't want the Mariners to make the playoffs for the first time in 21 years when you're the 18th seed. Yes, yeah. when we're the 16th team to make it in, it's like, well, we wouldn't have even been fucking close. Yeah, we could have made it 10 times over the last 20 years if that was the case. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I I want it to be fucking difficult, and I want us to earn it. And I want to give my entire wife's savings. <laughs> uh, not wife's. Wife's. That's what I thought you said. Yeah. I was like, that'd be funny if you said wife. Right? Uh, to get dog shit seats. <laughs> you know the seats that they normally rope off in the very top where the banners are? Yeah. I'll so sit up there. <laughs> the bogey seats. Yeah. The bogey the seats. Yeah. Bogey can hit a ball that high. Yeah. The bogey hoagie. Not biggie. Speaking of which, we're going to get some lunch or something. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hell yeah. Let us know what your favorite memories are from your local ballpark, and then also let us know what your favorite memory are of your team beating the Mariners at your local ballpark. <laughs> or ours. <laughs> or ours. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in on that face. <laughs>